The title of this video is called Exponents and Integers Problem Type 2. It's kind of an odd title, but basically what you're going to learn is that if you have a negative number or a positive number for that matter, and it's raised to an exponent with or without parentheses around that number, how do you handle it? Um, the reason why this says problem type 2, it's because that this video is aligned with an online math program called Alex. So if you're using Alex and you're looking for help with the topic exponents and integers problem type 2, you've come to exactly the right place. All right, so let's just do a quick review of what exponents are. Um, if we have 4 to the third power, the 4 is called our base, the 3 is called our exponent. It's telling the 4 to multiply itself 3 times. So 4 times 4 would give us 16, and 16 times 4 would give us a 64. So 4 to the third would be 64. It's not super different if you have a negative, we'll say 6, raised to the second power. Notice that the negative 6, however, in this case, is in a set of parentheses. That is super important. Um, the parentheses is telling the exponent, like, take the quantity of negative 6 and square it. If the parentheses is not there, we're not going to take the quantity of negative 6, but I'll show that in just a second. So you would take negative 6 and square it. Negative times a negative will give us a positive. 6 times 6 will give us 36. As a note, as an aside, if you happen to use a TI-83 graphing or TI-84 graphing calculator, and you have this problem, and you type it in like this on your calculator, it will give you the wrong answer. You want to use the parentheses if they give you the parentheses. There's a reason for that. Right, so a minute ago I, I mentioned that if there's no parentheses around, uh, uh, sorry, something with exponents, you have to treat it a little bit differently. So I'm going to go back to almost what we had a minute ago. Our exponent is 2, our base is 6, not negative 6. In this case, what's actually happening is you, this, you have to read it in this way. This is not think, thought of as a negative sign, it's called take the opposite of. So opposite of. So in actuality, what you're going to do is you're going to square 6 and then take the opposite of 6 squared. So you want to take the opposite of 6 squared. And that is a huge difference in the order of operations with integers. Um, order of operations says to apply exponents before you do any adding or subtracting. This is like a subtraction sign, this negative. Um, and the way I like to teach my students is to think of it not as a negative sign, but it's saying to take the opposite of 6 squared. So when you have any kind of a expression to evaluate and it starts with a negative, I wouldn't use the word negative, I would say take the opposite of and then keep reading. So let's finish that problem, let me just rewrite it. What we're going to do is take the opposite of 6 times 6, 6 times 6 is 36, so we end up with an answer of negative 36. And this is exactly why I mentioned on the last slide that the TI-83 calculators or TI-84 graphing calculators, if you type it in exactly like this, it will give you negative 36. And it's completely 100% right. Um, so it's on you to remember that if they have exponents around something, I'm sorry, if they have parentheses around something with an exponent, put them in in your calculator. Um, let's look at another one. What if we have negative 2 to the 4th, which I would actually correctly read as saying take the opposite of 2 to the 4th. Okay, so what we need to do is we are actually taking the opposite of 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, so we're going to get a negative 16 here. It feels weird, but it's a lot different than if we had negative 2 to the 4th. Because then you're, it's saying, take this quantity of negative 2, and that is your base, and multiply that. All right, and then negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. That's negative 4. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. Negative 8 times negative 2 gives you a positive 16. So you can see why it's really important. Sometimes if, if you're not careful, you could get completely the wrong answer. Let's try a couple other ones. On this slide, I'm going to write down three problems. Um, if you're kind of like feeling like you're good with this and you want to just practice before you log off, then feel free. Um, if you want some more kind of guidance in how to solve these or evaluate these, um, then I'll definitely do that afterwards. But my guess would be that most of you guys are ready to copy down the problems, hit pause, and then do them and come hit play and see how it works out. So let's do um, negative 4 and one more. How about negative 9 squared? 
I'm going to kick it up a notch, a little bit of a notch in my next slide. So this is this is almost as hard as it could get on these. Okay, the top, uh, it's not an equation because there's no equal sign, but the top expression is telling you to take that quantity of negative 8 and multiply it by itself twice. Negative 8 times negative 8 will be a positive 64. The second expression that we're looking at, it's not telling you to take the quantity of negative 4 and cube it. It's saying take the opposite of 4 times 4 times 4. 4 times 4 is 16. 16 times 4 is 64. And the opposite of 64 is negative 64. And our last expression on this slide, it is telling us to take that whole quantity of negative 9 and multiply it by itself. Negative times a negative is positive. 9 times 9 is 81. All right, one uh, last slide here. It'll just have like a, or we'll kick it up just a smidge. So if we have something like this, because God knows we need to make it completely crazy. I'll do another one down here. Okay. And again, I kind of taught a minute ago, like the words that I used I find can be helpful. First, what we need to do is we need to just address this piece. And this is saying to take negative 2 and cube it. And this is saying to take the opposite of that. So we're going to take the opposite of negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. So this isn't my final answer, but I'm going to start out that I still have this opposite of, I still have this that I wrote, and then I have all of this turned into the negative 8. So what is the opposite of negative 8? It is positive 8. It feels a little flaky, but just try to take the things that are being asked just kind of one at a time. We have to do the exponents first in this bottom one. So we're taking the quantity of negative 5 and we're cubing it. And then we're going to have to take the opposite of it. So it's the opposite of negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5. I'm going to bring this opposite sign down. Negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25. And positive 25 times negative 5 will give us negative 125. We can't leave our answer like this. You don't want to have two negative signs next to each other. The opposite of negative 125 is a positive 125. Some people would just, they wouldn't think of all those words. They'd just be like, the negative signs cancel out, which is true. So that's about as gory as this little topic can get, as, as far as I can think. Um, they would never do, like, take, they would never do that. Now, I've never seen a textbook do that. That's ludicrous. So we don't have to go that far, which is kind of nice. All right, thanks for listening.